Market to Market is everywhere you are. Subscribe to Market to Market on YouTube, find us on the PBS video app to stream on demand, and add our three podcasts on your favorite podcasting app. Monica of Charsky cultivates her inner city community from the ground up through urban farming. Where we're standing was a redlined neighborhood. After moving into a historically underprivileged location near downtown Des Moines, Iowa, the young wife and mother also started the city's first community fridge and pantry, kept afloat by volunteers who share her commitment to eradicate food insecurity. The main difference between urban farming and gardening are probably scale, succession, and selling. The former social worker says fresh, chemical-free produce should never be considered a luxury item. Her Sweet Tooth Farm accepts food stamps and other assistance, shares farm implements with neighbors, and operates primarily right next door. When we moved here, this was Royal Park. The Parks Department actually still owns this space. We are stewards of this lot. Her push to convert the rundown spot to small-scale agricultural use impressed the city's director of Parks and Recreation, Ben Page, who says it's a first in his department's 125-year history. She's helped so many people. And I think it wouldn't be a surprise if I tell you Des Moines is not a wealthy city. I mean, we talk about 80 plus percent of our kids on free and reduced lunch. Another goal of the city was to find ways to stop these food deserts and to help people find local produce and healthy food. And you point to this as probably one of the successful things we started that movement with, which Monica. Despite local accolades, Ofcharsky's plan to expand from one to three acres was nipped in the bud this summer when another city division informed her they would not renew leases on two other parcels of industrial land she'd acquired both unused since the 1970s. It's quite a precarious position to be in. The explanation that we were given was that the city of Des Moines just doesn't have enough undeveloped land available for people. So they want to have it ready in case someone ever wanted to build on it. In a June email to the mayor and city council, Des Moines' director of development services stated efforts to redevelop, expand the city's tax base and employment opportunities were behind the decision, reiterating such properties are intended for development purposes in the long term. Of Charsky says officials offered up another piece of land, but she found it inadequate for various reasons. This might sound... Um forward or blunt, but it is very easy to make a graphic or a hashtag about supporting local farms or shop local or even about healthy eating. It's much more difficult to put your money where your mouth is and make decisions that potentially are not as lucrative financially for the city, but could be exponentially better for the community in real terms. While her initial model is rather unique to the area, Nationwide, many urban gardeners have run afoul of what they call myriad hazy provisions as local governments adapt. When we talk about the laws and the policies that impact how we produce our food, who produces our food, uh, urban agriculture is definitely a growing part of that discussion. Jennifer Zwagerman is the director of Drake University's Agricultural Law Center in Des Moines. In addition to educating the next generation of attorneys, Drake publishes research and information on issues impacting food and farm production. Zoning is probably the biggest thing. And you know, you're also going to need to look at tax issues. You're going to need to look at uh, business issues. You know, how are you planning to operate? What changes if you plan to expand? Just a few miles away lies a pocket of unincorporated county land and another neighborhood farm. Dogpatch Urban Gardens, which also felt blindsided by bureaucracy in the recent past. Frankly, the hardships we faced, we almost just shut down the business. Former high school science teacher Jenny Quiner now sells fresh organic produce to restaurants, grocers, and at her farm stand. She says though diligent and proactive about local regulations, two years after startup, she faced around $75,000 in commercial storefront compliance requirements when Polk County officials updated her assessment. Initially, we were deemed a farm stand, which kind of checked the boxes. The two restrooms. My gut says the county probably thought that this will be a small thing that, you know, will just kind of float. But we ended up being more successful in getting a lot of people through the door, which then got more eyes on our business. Ultimately, Quiner was able to rally with community donations covering a portion of the funds via a wildly successful online fundraiser. That really was an uplifting experience. 
In a statement, the Polk County Board of Supervisors commended local food producers, particularly during the pandemic, and said they're open to discussing unnecessary barriers to entry while maintaining fair rules to protect resident health and safety. The problem we dealt with was when we asked initially if we needed these things, we were told no. Quiner says those following in her footsteps should exhaust all legal advice before breaking ground. Efforts in recent years by Iowa's General Assembly to address urban farm zoning issues may have lost steam, but cities coast to coast have turned urban decay into bountiful harvests with support from federal grants through USDA. Others counter land issues which can be micromanaged at the homeowner association level are best dealt with locally. The cities that have really work to encourage this type of, of activity. They set clear definitions for what they expect. What's an urban garden versus a commercial enterprise? They're going to define that so that when you're thinking about entering this market or becoming part of this movement, you know what it is that you need to do. In the meantime, Ovcharsky is faced with a setback in production and may have no way to recoup the $10,000 she spent rehabbing the soil on lots the city is reclaiming but she says she'll make it through with support from friends and neighbors. She plans to do her best avoiding similar issues in the search for new properties, but offers a word of caution. Unfortunately, bureaucracy moves a lot slower than the growing season. For Market to Market, I'm Josh Bittner.